Yeah, so my name is Lauri Kajan and I come from Chispo. Uh, we are based on uh, Finland. Oh, yes. Uh, I work uh, as a software developer and uh, Chispo is founded in 2012. Uh, currently we have uh, 15 employees. Uh, we do consulting. Uh, for companies, uh, how they use uh, Force 4G uh, software and solutions and open data. And we also develop uh, software, uh, QGIS plug plugins, and uh, some also do some core development. And we also provide training for PostgreSQL, QGIS, GeoServer, and all the software. <laughs> and uh, also provide some support for our customers. So, um, today I'm going to present you uh, how to streamline QGIS workflows. Um, by doing some uh, triggers and uh, views on the PostgreSQL side. And our case was uh, waste soil management for city, city of Tampere. And uh, quick recap or introduction to the case. Basically there, there are uh, construction sites uh, and they dig bad, bad soil out of the ground and uh, then they want to, there's a hole on the ground and they want to fill it with uh, some uh, construction aggregate for foundation for buildings. So on construction sites there is a surplus of waste soil and a deficit on different soil ma materials. And uh, the goal of the, this system is uh, to reuse as much as possible waste soil on other construction sites. So that means there's less unnecessary, unnecessary dumps on landfills, uh, no need for so much production from natural resources and it reduces transportation. And what motivates me the most is that uh, it saves nature and it saves some money for the customer, or uh, actually a lot of money. Hmm. Um, the system looks basically this. We have, here we have uh, two construction sites. Uh, first, we have here some big rocks and we can process those uh, big rocks, crossing those uh, to smaller rocks. And then we transport that, uh, those small rocks uh, to other construction sites and then we can use that soil on, on some deficit or uh, hole, hole on the ground. And uh, here we have, do you see my mouse here? Yeah. Uh, there is also always uh, the, what's the quantity of the soil and uh, if we process that uh, all the thousand cubic meters, the smaller rocks, it uh, comes to 600 cubic meters and uh, then we transport only 400 cubic meters and then use the, all those uh, for the deficit. So it's, uh, here we then have available uh, nothing available for those big rocks and uh, 
then there is 200 left after transportation and uh, we have to manage all that. And the data model looks like this. Uh, there is uh, that uh, table for construction sites and tables for soil and deficit and then transportation table and process table and uh, usage table. So normally without uh, any triggers or <laughs> automation on the PostgreSQL side on QGIS to make uh, that uh, transportation feature, we first have to create uh, that target soil feature. That transportation feature refer references uh, the soil, uh, the source, source and the target soils. So we first have to create that uh, target soil feature. After that, we can create the trans transportation feature. And lastly, we finally, we have to update the quantities available, available and uh, the missing deficit uh, quantity. So it's too much uh, manual work. Uh, so, our solution uh, in this project was uh, to create views and uh, triggers to, to the PostgreSQL side. So, what's a database trigger? Uh, it is basically just a function on a database that runs uh, when some event happens uh, on, on some table. Then those events can be insert, update, delete, truncate. And uh, then we have to define when, when the, that function is run. Is it run before insert or before update or after delete or completely instead of some of these uh, events? Uh, for example, we can run our function update available uh, quantity after update on a transport table. And those functions can do basically anything. They can update the values of the records or they can uh, create new objects or refer some materialized views or create views or, or run any, any kind of SQL query. Ah. And uh, um, editable views are basically just normal views where we have defined all the instead of instead of insert, instead of update, and instead of delete triggers, and uh, write, write written uh, functions that uh, what we do when one insert of try is trying to insert a feature to this uh, view. Um, actually, in PostgreSQL, simple views that you just uh, select a few columns uh, from one table, uh, those are automatic, automatically editable. But uh, if there are joins between tables in that uh, view, then we need uh, the, these instead of triggers. So, um, what we did is uh, to streamline that um, transportation adding uh, was that uh, we created a view for transport 
uh, that includes the source and target soil IDs, and uh, we joined the soil table and uh, took the source and target site IDs from the, from that uh, table. So the end goal is to make this kind of uh, SQL query that uh, we just uh, define the source soil ID and uh, where we want to transport that on what what a target construction site and uh, how much and optionally we can define that uh, when what's the date that that is process is planned to happen so we created them instead of trigger instead of insert trigger that uh, first creates the target soil feature and uh, saves the soil type, of course, uh, that it reads from the source, source soil feature. And when we have that uh, uh, target soil existing, we know that uh, it's um, ID, primary key. And after that, we can create the transportation feature that uh, references uh, the right soil, uh, source, source soil feature and uh, the target soil feature. And uh, it then fixes and uh, manages all those uh, available uh, quantities of so uh, bodies of soil and the missing deficit part. And in QGIS, we add the at the view, and uh, QGIS uh, notice that uh, it's editable because there is uh, those instead of insert triggers. And in QGIS, we define those uh, relationships between the construction site and soil features and uh, transportation features. And, uh, Then we create a, the add, add the relation to the soil form, the editing form of uh, soil uh, soil table. So after that, in QGIS, user can just uh, create a child feature, child transport feature for the uh, source soil feature. And uh, without this uh, auto automation, um, I counted that uh, the previous process uh, user needed to do like 20 mouse clicks and uh, or events, uh, write, uh, write the quantities uh, to multiply places and uh, all that. It took some 20 mouse clicks. And with these triggers uh, on place, uh, user needs only five mouse clicks to do the same thing. Um, this was the first, first uh, automation, kind of. and. Uh, yeah, here is the sample of the trigger SQL <laughs> code. Uh, here we actually create the target soil soil features. There is a one insert uh, query, and uh, it returns the ID of the new created feature, and uh, then we can use that in the, uh, in the second uh, insert where we create the transport feature. And uh, yeah, this create is, creates the function and uh, this part here on the left, uh, on the right, uh, 
create actual uh, trigger where we define when it's run and uh, on what events. And here is the actual the form. Uh, this is uh, the whole form is uh, is a form for the construction site. Here we have a tab that tells that what waste soil we have on that construction site. And on that tab, uh, we define the, it lists uh, all the deficit uh, soils that, uh, that is needed on that constru construction site. And uh, here when we click the soil, soil feature, uh, then here we can define the transportation. We can export that um, soil uh, to other, other site. And when we click the add a new feature, then we have to only define the target site, quantity, and an optional date. So it's uh, really simple. And on the other tabs, uh, we can create those uh, processing or process events that we change the soil type uh, to, to some other, other soil types. And then uh, on the last tab, uh, there is a usage that uh, there we create usage features that uh, uh, take some soil and uh, changes that uh, to deficit. Um, yeah, the other other automation was that um, we automatically update uh, the availability and uh, missing quantities. So. There is a before insert trigger on soil and deficit uh, tables that sets the available and missing quantities uh, to the original quantity. And then uh, there is an after insert trigger on usage, tra transport, and uh, process tables that updates the, those uh, quantities. And uh, then there is, uh, of course, if we change the plan, how much we are going to transport, uh, then it recalculates the values. And the third one was um, date handling. The bodies of soils are available only on certain time range uh, when the process is uh, scheduled. Uh, this is modeled in the database as uh, two date columns. Uh, QGS, unfortunately, doesn't support yet uh, date range columns on uh, PostgreSQL. So, unscheduled availability is uh, modeled as empty values. Normally, those are null values. But uh, if we want to filter, filter uh, by date, we always have to take the null values into uh, accounts that uh, we have to write a query where it's, uh, it's uh, select all the soil features that are the date is less than this, or the date is null. And uh, so we decided to use infinity values uh, for the null values, but unfortunately, QGIS doesn't support infinity values uh, on the date columns. Uh, it just uh, reads those as a null and uh, tries to write uh, infinity uh, tries to always uh, writes null to the database if there is no date value set. So uh, on 
database side, we created a before insert or update triggers uh, that just replaces null dates with infinity uh, on the start date uh, it replaces that uh, minus infinity and uh, on the end date it re replaces uh, null values as uh, plus infinity. So now we uh, user can select all available bodies without considering null values at all. So it just uh, selects all the soil features that uh, match the date criteria. Okay, uh, that's, uh, that was my, my presentation. Uh, here's um, our contact information. You can find us uh, from gispo.fi. Uh, you can send an email to our info address or you can talk to Sanna, our CEO, over there, waving her hand. And yeah, talk business things to Sanna and uh, technical things to me. <laughs> uh, you can find me from Twitter and uh, you can actually find an example project from uh, GitHub. Uh, I uploaded it uh, 25 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it, uh, it works. Okay, uh, so thank you for your atten attention and uh, what questions do we okay. have? Okay, thank you, Laurie. <laughs>